All right, so let's start with this one, which I already demonstrated part of in class. I think I'm probably just going to talk about it a bit. I don't think I need to demonstrate it live. You've done these before. Once you have a um, Microsoft compiler on your Windows machine, you can test these defenses. And here's the information about um, Microsoft Address Space Layout Randomization, how many bits of entropy there are, and as you can see, um, it's flows from 8 to 19 bits, not an extremely large amount. So you can observe this on Windows. If you just compile this, well, I guess I'll just do it. Um, if I make ESP3.cpp, I bring up my Windows machine. All right, so my notepad, ESP3.cpp. All right, and I put in that code. All right, and so this code has inline assembly, which moves ESP into the variable data. It defines a data integer to put it in, and then it just prints out data with C out in hex form. So it'll just print an address, which was in ESP at this point of the code. So I save that, and let me get to my instructions, shove them over to the side. All right, so I'm going to compile it normally. Save and close. Hmm. Didn't listen to me saving it. Oh, probably wasn't in the right window. All right, now, all right. So right click should have pasted. Hmm, all right. Maybe it's going to act up again. Copy. Yeah, it's not letting me paste. That's not a good sign. All right. All right, there it compiles. No, unexpected end of file. All right, let's see what's going on. Um, oh, somehow a character ended up there. Save that. Control S. Oh, the S somehow turned into there. Okay. Let's try that again. No, not that. Um, CL slash EHSC ESP3.CPP. All right. So ESP3.EXE. All right. So there we go. That's printing an address. And every time I run it, I get a different address. So that's address space layout randomization. Every time you run the program, it randomly moves it in memory. So, you can compile it without address based layout randomization by linking it with dynamic base no, and then every time you run it, you'll see the same value. So, you can test the randomness here, and I wrote uh, a project here, you can go through it. You can do five of them, and you'll see the five different values. You can run it 10,000 times, and then run it and put that in a file called 10k.txt. You'll have 10,000 supposedly random values, and then you can run a little Python program to check it out. Um, Python 2 is installed with um, Immunity, so you can use Python 2 on your Windows machine, and you can uh, find out how many matches there are, and you'll see how many lines match this one value, 19FF, and you'll see there are a few that are close to what you get with address space layout randomization turned off. So if you tried an exploit 10,000 times, you'd get a value very close to the unprotected value. What is end one in the program? Um, end one? Oh, end L probably. Yeah, uh, let me go back to the program. Yeah, this is end L. That's just uh, the end of a line. I think it's basically a carriage return or a line feed. Yeah, this is a C++ thing, this C out thing. Just a way to print using IO stream instead of using printf. No particularly good reason, just one way to print things. It's a little funny. You turn it into hex by piping it through hex. Yeah, good. All right. Yep. Questions are always welcome. Anyway, so you can test the randomness and um, find out how likely it is to reproduce a value you would have seen. And then I've got another file 
So you can see what happens here. All right, and then you can view memory sections, which we already did. You can see them in Immunity, or you can see them in um, by running this program that we looked at before. This program makes a gives you addresses in all the main sections, text, data, heap, and stack, and some data on the, the stack. So you can, uh, yeah, somebody uh, didn't hear. NG Degree Group is very good. They're very well known, uh, a very good place to work for. You have to be a pretty advanced pen tester to get in. They will make you solve a CTF puzzle. But it's very good. I've had students that did it, and they were very happy. Anyway, so we talked about that stuff already. And I think that's it. Yep. A couple of challenges. We already talked about these in lecture. How with no protection, if you turn off all the protections, then nothing will move but the heap. But if your protections are turned on, then the heap and the stack will move randomly, and there will be a stack cookie that's random every time to protect it. So that's all I want to say about 303.